how many, you have no idea what's coming. We smell Christian blood. We, we are waiting for our day. And when the call is given, millions of us will be released. And they looked at me and said, you believe in revivals and you believe in Pentecost and the power of God. You believe in all that. We believe in the Black Awakening. So I look at you or I look here? It's up to you. Okay. So, all right. What is the Black Awakening? Um, it's related to the Red Horse Prophecy in Revelation. It's related to uh, 2 Thessalonians 2 when it says about the day of the Lord, the Parousia, that day will not occur until the apocalypse of the Antichrist and the apostasia, the word rebellion or revolt. That's all really defined in the prophecy of the red horse. But here's where the term came from and why I used it purposely. When I started dealing with ritually abused individuals, and then we dealt with military-oriented, highly trained, you know, programmed shooters and assassins inside of them. When we began to deal with them, I dealt with someone from Fort Bragg for quite a while and a few others. We were sitting in a lake, Conneaut Lake. They reached over and ripped open my shirt to see if I was wired, if I was wiring and recording them. And they were the most sophisticated, satanic warrior type person. They knew five, six languages. They knew the ancient twilight languages. They knew how to conjure. They knew, they knew how to use Belteshari, Okwam, all these old Pictish languages of the Druids to summon. They were, they are the real Luciferian. They've been through many human sacrificial things. So they sat there to tell me some of those things, what they've been involved with, how they sacrifice a human. I'm listening to all this stuff from them. And then they said to me, you have no idea, Russ, how many of us there are out there. How many satanic, cho they, they use the term, chosen ones. Uh, you have no idea how many, you have no idea what's coming. Um, we smell Christian blood. We, we are waiting for our day. And when the call is given, millions of us will be released. And they looked at me and said, you believe in revivals and you believe in Pentecost and the power of God. You believe in all that. We believe in the Black Awakening, a multi-continental release of power to activate the program demonized, where they've weaponized the demonic powers to these super soldiers. Are they waiting for a specific time to unleash their power? Yeah, they are, because they have to do it at the moment the Antichrist is, like you read in 2 Thessalonians 2, that it's caught to echo, the restrainer is holding back the apocalypse of the Antichrist, the unveiling in his movement. So right now he's held restrained. Soon as the, he who restrains is removed, soon as that occurs, we have White Horse, the release of the Antichrist. Instantly, we have the release of the red, it says the whole earth. Arena, peace is taken from the whole earth, and all of a sudden, it doesn't give the details, um, but all of a sudden, on a global scale, People are released to begin to, and the Greek word is svadzo, slaughter, begin to slaughter people. It's used of animal ritual butchery to begin to slaughter individuals. That's exactly how they defined it to me back in the 90s. And we've heard this again and again and again. So that scenario fits the Masonic version of chaos before a new order. It fits uh, Father Meridon from the, Black, uh, the Cathedral of the Black Goat, you know, his book, The Devil's Bible. It fits that scenario too. So some of the oldest, darkest occultists, the idea of chaos first, a collapsing of everything so that a new order can rise, that's all by design. Uh, and we've been given the heads up in prophecy, but all prophecy has boots on the ground. It'll, it'll, it'll all you know, eventually happen. So I do believe that millions and millions of these trained, programmed, altered, demonized super soldiers, uh, whether we want to say it or not, they believe they are the, they're being raised to help bring the Antichrist in. When, I was in. when I was in England just a few months ago, their top guy that deals with SRA, Wilfred Wong, 25 years. So first time I meet him, I pull him aside and I said, listen, you've been doing this 25 years, yeah? I said, you know all about programming and demons, all that? Yes. 
I said, I looked right at him and I just said, Wilfred, why are they here in England? Instantly, he said, they are here to collapse our government. They are here to help bring in and usher in the Antichrist in a new order. He, he didn't know me. He, didn't, he, didn't have, he, he already he knew. That's true in Germany, when we were in Germany, when we went to Vadelsberg Castle. That's true in Poland, when we went there. That's true in Switzerland. That's true in Canada. So when we talk about our research in 38 years worldwide, there may be well over 100 million generations of them. And if even half, or even if, a, even if 10% were intact, like say the United States, remember the shooter in Vegas? Look what he did. Look what that guy did. Okay, notice what, what would happen if ten thousand of them, or like, or like Colorado homes, or like Jared in Arizona, what if ten thousand of them were released in one week? That's their that's their plot plan, and biblical prophecies ahead of that to say here is what is going to happen, and from that a, you know, global monetary collapse, and from that that's all that chaos is coming. So Revelation 13, a whole new order with the Antichrist can come. Wow. Scary stuff. Yeah. <laughs> can be. It's it's scary for the world. For yeah, us, for us yeah. we know well, no matter what. Yeah. Bolden with the yeah, Holy yeah, Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. So, so next question. This is a two-part question. First part, does SRA exist? And if so, how prevalent is it in society today? Yeah, satanic ritual abuse, and I could say it this way, it not only exists, um, satanic ritual abuse is inseparably connected to multiple personality disorder. All of society knows since the late 70s, and even dsm 3 dsm 4 those are the diagnostic manuals for psychology. They all know that multiple, all of a sudden, multiplicity started showing up everywhere. They call it DID now. So the secular world, has, they, they're registering, you know, millions coming in for diagnosis on that. Now, they don't know how to handle the satanic side. So, I'm gonna tell you just straight out, after 38 years of dealing with it, not only is SRA real here in the United States, that there are millions of victims by design, uh, that there's now generations of them. We deal with 65 and 70 year olds, they're the first generation. Then we go to 40 year olds and 20 year olds, I got eight year olds and 12 year olds we're dealing with. Because if you don't stop this somewhere, they do it to the next generation. That's by design, that's the way it's supposed to be for them. So, but it occurs in selection. Um, it's generational. It caused, you to, and it's simply to say that they, they bring a lot of trauma to the child to cause split in personality so that they can demonize and or begin to program. You're gonna be a witch, you're gonna be a conjurer, you're gonna be a program shooter. All kinds of these things happen. And then they're raised in that system, and they're raised to keep all of that hidden down and just have kind of little Joey up or little Sally up, and they may not know until they're 15, 16, they may not know what's inside them till later on. But millions have already showed up at psych wards all across America since the late 70s to this day. To, you, we look at a child and automatically, we're gonna protect them, save them, guard them, whatever it takes. They look at a child, they'd eat it alive, they'd destroy it, they'd torture it. You gotta remember, that's their nature. And so, if they could show more of their nature to a defenseless child, they love that. That's why some rituals are called demon revels or satanic revels. The younger the child, here's exactly what dark undergrounders have said to me. Um, the younger, the better, and we never kill them right away. We prolong the torture, why? Because we have to raise the energies, the terror, the fear, and then little by little letting some blood out because blood is the, and all that torment, it's like, think in terms of rats and garbage. Some smelly old garbage draws the rats. A ritual with all that torture, with all that pain, ultimately prescribed by the demons in the first place, it draws them. And once they begin to open the blood gate, that's what they attach to in the context ritual. Then when a child or a human is killed, that's when the demons are released to the practitioners. So it's all about their un, unsatiable hatred of God. Anything they can do to harm humanity, harm innocence as an attack on God in a sense, um, there's no question uh, 
in their nature, they don't shed a tear. They don't have any mercy. Um, so they'll harm, and, and, they, and they love that as part of the entrance uh, to come into the side. Here's, here's the other side of it. We've been to Canada, Scotland, Geneva, Switzerland, Germany, Poland. They're all over there. We just got back from Scotland, UK, and we met one of the guys there, one of the leaders in the whole nation on the subject, and same issue. It stems from the original Nazis creating a master race. Wherever the Nazis went in the early 50s, rat lines all around the planet, wherever you see them going to escape, then you see the, ri the rise of SRA. So we need to rename this. SRA, are the, that's the tools to hammer this in and, and to augment these people and to bring the demonization and to create them. But really it is part of the master race development that started back in the late 30s and Himmler's goal was to create 200 million of them. That was his stated goal. 